Hello, my name is Venerable Metaji, Secretary of the Australian Sanger Association, and thank you for joining this briefing on the suggested revised Australian Sanger Association draft constitution, which is going to be put to the vote at the AGM at Nan Chen Temple in Wollongong in March. This briefing session is to give you background on why a new constitution is proposed. Most states in Australia have been looking at their compliance under the Associations Act. We are an association and we are registered in the state of New South Wales. New South Wales introduced a new act in 2016. It incorporated new reg regulations that the regulators wish to see introduced into the constitution of any association which it governed. The regulators in each state have been very helpful and have designed what are called model rules to assist an association consider the new law and where necessary consider adopting the terminology, the word phrasing in the model rules into their new constitution. This year's ASA committee has tried to make the job easy for members to understand the changes and as well as sending you the constitution proper, we will be sending you with the papers a marked up copy to show you the differences between what the committee believes should be amended within the constitution from those model rules and what the committee has proposed to keep from the previous constitution within the new drafted constitution. The data that we have taken from the model rules, New South Wales Association Incorporated Regulations 2016, 2016 are color coded blue. The information that we've retained from the present constitution is in black. And now I would like to take you through the changes that are foreseen so that you have the maximum information prior to the AGM. And should you wish to contact us with issues or concerns, at the end of this presentation, we'll tell you how we're going to set up some information sessions prior to the AGM. So firstly, when you look at the document, you'll find that the initial definitions are in blue and they come from the model rules um, of the New South Wales um, regulator. Part two, the aims, objectives and powers our constitution was really well written and maintained over many years and we've maintained those aims, objectives and powers uh, to the letter. So there's no change there in terms of the reason that we set up the Australian Sanger Association, um, the powers that it has to operate on behalf of the, of the members. So there is no change there between the present constitution and this new one being put to you. The material starts to change a little bit under the membership category. For in the membership category, the regulators have said that they've had to resolve a number of disputes around membership, either under the application for membership, um, they've had disputes that they needed to resolve or in the resignation of members or the holding of the register of members sufficient that that can be examined by anybody that wants to see it. 
So as you work through the section on membership, you'll find that the principles of our membership um, do not change, but further information is added in terms of the clauses under which someone is approved for membership. That's referred to as Clause 5. Clause 5 takes the full detail from the model rules so that there is no um, discrepancy with that legislation. And it's important to say at this point of the presentation that the government has indicated that where an association takes the bulk of its model rules without change, without change to a sentence, then it is protected under law should someone complain about something under the association's constitution. In the event of a complaint, the regulator would look at the association's constitution and say, ah, oh, you accepted all of our model rules, um, the answer to the complainant is in the constitution, or if we didn't follow the particular model rules, the regulator would say, look, we would probably have to find for the complainant because we gave you sufficient notice to add these terms to your constitution and you've chosen not to. So if we choose not to put some of these model rules into the constitution, we would have to explain to the regulator as to why. So as you go down now through section six and seven, at seven, eight and nine, you find that the model rules were slightly better terms than in our present constitution, so we've adapted them in full. It gives the uh, membership access to uh, any record that we hold, and a small fee is to be payable for any copies that a member should seek um, from the forms that we hold. Whilst the new uh, model rules indicate that the association has the opportunity to charge for a membership, we have reiterated in section 10 that there should be no fees or subscriptions for the membership, as has been the long-term history of our present constitution. The new section that I want to draw your attention to is resolution of disputes. So again, in this new law coming down, the regulators would say they are trying to introduce simple and constructive terminology to assist associations deal with their own resolution of disputes and that the regulator is only approached um, as a last resort. And if a member does not feel as though they've been adequately um, helped by the Australian Sanger Association and its committee, then a right of resolution under mediation or arbitration should be possible. And that you find under section 12, with some additional points from the model rules added to our old constitution under 13, the disciplining of members. And this talks about how a complaint can be made complaints such as when in someone seems to have acted in manner to discredit the good name of Buddhism or is refused or neglected to comply with some aspects of the constitution. So the elements of dispute and possible um, discipline are laid out and if a complaint needs to be dealt with by the committee it explains um, how the notice uh, is given to the committee, the time frames in which the committee must respond to those complaints and what action um, is taken, what notice is given that the matter is closed, either through um, a notice that there is no uh, further action and the parties are now happy the matter has been resolved or in the sad instance of an expulsion or a suspension, how that would take effect. If a, a, an appeal 
is placed by a member who's been disciplined, then there are new aspects from the model rules here to explain how that takes place. So there are a simple and reasonable process in place to help everybody involved in a dispute. Next, we move to the section, the part that deals with the committee. And you can see that the powers and the composition of the committee remain the same. The new model rules a section in blue there at I under section 16 just reiterates that the members of the committee hold their office until immediately before the election of the committees at the annual general meeting. And then we decided under 17 to take the model rules in terms of the election of committee members. Again, the regulator has had to intervene in possibly too many um, issues in New South Wales. And I find this is true of other associations in other states as well. So the regulators are asking that an election of committee members, once this constitution is validated, i.e. for the 2021 AGM, that a nomination for a candidate must be in writing and signed by two members of an association and also have the written consent of the candidate on that nomination form that they are happy to stand. The form in writing must be delivered to the Secretary of the Association seven days prior to the date of the annual general meeting. And then the wording for our new constitution as suggested on the model rules goes on to say how the election takes place when there's insufficient nominations, when there's a need for a ballot and how that ballot takes place. The proposed constitution then goes on to uh, explain further detail. The secretary's position remains relatively unchanged. The treasurer's duties um, encapsulate a few more aspects of terminology in the model rules. For example, the treasurer shall cause the final accounts to be cast at the end of each calendar year and copies distributed amongst members. And that if required by law at any stage in the future, the treasurer will have the accounts audited. Presently, we're too small of an organization for those accounts to be audited. We do meet the law on this factor. Okay, a new section 20, casual vacancies. New in the sense that we decided to again accept all of the model rules proposed by the New South Wales government. This section explains how a casual vacancy arises. Um, it occurs when someone dies, disrobes, ceases to be a member, etc. And the committee has the power to reappoint someone at its next meeting, should it wish to fill that casual vacancy on the committee. 21, removal of committee members. There are uh, requirements under the model rules that an association can take action should it wish that it must remove, uh, remove a member from the committee and they're covered under 21. Removal of committee members. 22 committee members and quorum. Again, the wording here under the model rules was slightly better than in our present constitution and we decided to take it as written in the model rules. Some things to point your notice to is the committee must meet at least three times in each period of the 12 months. Um, to date, we have been meeting uh, monthly in the 2019-20 period. So there's a less onerous requirement 
on associations once this constitution is, is uh, accepted by the members and then duly um, approved and accepted by the regulator. We have kept many important terms from the old constitution. You can see, for example, under 22.9, the management committee shall in no way interfere in the administration or inter internal affairs of any Buddhist organization, group or temple. Twenty-three. Appointment of association members as committee members to constitute a quorum. This is a section that the model rules has introduced from the government legislation saying that if any time the number of committee members is less than the number to required to constitute a quorum for a committee meeting, the existing committee members may appoint a sufficient number of regular meetings of the association as committee members to enable the quorum to be constituted. I think that would be a very, very rare event, um, but that's a positive set of clauses to assist the running of the association. 24, use of technology at committee meetings. We have been using technology now um, to run the, the Australian Sangha Association monthly committee me meetings with a technology called Zoom. Uh, this gives powers to ensure that the technology can be used at uh, AGMs and any other committee members, i.e. subcommittees as well. So hopefully that's acceptable to you. 25 is a new section giving delegation by the committee to a subcommittee. If a subcommittee is established, then the committee must, uh, by instruction in writing, delegate to the committee the functions that it wants undertaken. It gives that subcommittee a power of delegation, uh, explains how it is to function and reminds the subcommittee that any actions it taken is considered to be um, action taken by the committee as well. The subcommittee can meet and adjourn as it thinks proper and must stay within the terms of the written agreement that is being given by the committee. The present ASA committee thinks it would be helpful to have subcommittees from time to time um, especially when there are major issues to be resolved. 14. Voting and decisions. 26. The bulk of this is taken from the present constitution with the addition that the committee can act um, even if there is a vacancy on the committee as long as it meets the terms of 26, 1 and 2 in detail. 26, 4 reminds us that any act or thing done or suffered or purporting to have been done or suffered by the committee or by any subcommittee is valid. Part 5 then turns to general meetings, which are normally two flavours. The annual general meeting, which most of you will be aware of, and the calling of a special general meeting when a need is expressed either by the committee or a certain number of members who desire that a special general meeting be called. So 28 has taken the detail from the model rules and indicated how the annual general meeting is to be set up. 29 says how a special general meeting can be called, again taken directly from the model rules. 30, the notice to be given for either of those two meetings has initially been taken from our present constitution with in blue the new dates for the notice periods explained in blue. 
14 days notice by the secretary for the general meeting and 21 days prior for any special resolutions to be held at that meeting. Now the new sections in blue lay out that no business other than that specified in the notice convening the general meeting is to be transacted at the meeting. And a member desiring to bring any business before a general meeting may give notice in writing of that business to the secretary and must, who must then include it in a notice to about the general meeting. Thirty one mentions the quorums for a general meeting. Five regular members present, those that are considered members under the Constitution, constitute a quorum for the transactions of the business at a general meeting, i.e. an annual general meeting. It talks about the time um, to be allowed for the meeting to go ahead, and then if sufficient members aren't available, that it's postponed to another date. The presiding member under 32 is the chairperson and if the chairperson is absent then the vice chairperson and then the ability for the chairperson to adjourn the meeting uh, if need be and the time frames in which the meeting must then be reheld. 34 making of decisions Again, we've chosen to take the whole part of the model rules under this section and it determines a show of hands on a motion and the need for a written ballot uh, if that circumstance should arise. 35 special resolutions may only be passed by the association in accordance with section 39 of the act, which requires a vote in excess of 75% of the voting membership. Thirty six explains that a member has one vote only. And 37, this is new and to draw to your attention, is that proxy votes will not be permitted if this constitution is accepted by the membership at the next AGM onwards or a special general meeting if one was to be held before the next AGM in 2021. Postal and electronic ballots are encouraged and that is featured under 38 and 39 the use of technology at a general meeting much as in the committee meetings is explained under 39. The closing sections now part six is miscellaneous We've taken the bulk of our present constitution in regard of the source of funds. We've taken a new section from the model rules to highlight under funds that are managed, that they be subject to any resolution passed by the association in the general meeting. The funds of the association are to be used solely in pursuance of the objects of the association in the manner that the committee determines. The fact that the association is a not-for-profit is well known. In the model rules, this is put towards the end of the document. We have placed it in line with that um, framework as suggested by the regulator. So the association is a non-profit is found at section 43. We've taken an additional factor from 
the model rules for the distribution of property on winding up of the association, which is at 44.2. And then there are four sections, all taken from the model rules, which is slightly better wording than was in our present constitution. So 46 refers to the change of name, objects and constitution. 47, the custody of the books, which can be expect, in, inspected at the association's official address or obtained from the secretary. 48 talks about the documents that are open for inspection free of charge. 49 talks about the service of notices. Our financial year remains the same under 50, the 1st of January to 31st of December. And the common seal is affixed to any legal documents that we have, and that needs to be in the custody of the secretary. So I hope I didn't go too fast through this presentation for you. And I hope the color coding explains to you how two documents were melded into one. Two documents were brought together to take the best factors of both to make sure that we took the full protection under the New South Wales new regulations and we didn't take anything out which was thought to be of new importance to the regulator and therefore came up with the best document we could possibly Put that through a number of iterations through the Australian Sanger Association Committee first and now we're in a position to send it to you with the papers for the AGM and ask that you give it your consideration and it will be put to, the, to vote on the floor of the AGM in Wollongong on the 10th of March 2020. If you have any issues related to this presentation feel free to contact me Venerable Metigy at asasecretary at gmail.com or we are going to set up a Zoom uh, teleconference so if anyone would like to have a conference about this and give their feedback on or about the 26th of February please email the secretary we'll send out a number of notices and we'll put on that event anyway so in about a week's time, we'll give you a detail of the Zoom details, how you can just join online from a computer or whatever and uh, engage uh, with the Constitution and give us feedback so the committee can look at amendments or if amendments need to come to the floor of the AGM, then we can give members sufficient notice. So thank you for your patience. I hope this wasn't too difficult. If any of the members need translations into their particular language, please let us know and we'll do the best to accommodate that, find a translator and translate the section that they're interested in. So again, please contact us. Otherwise, I wish you well and many blessings for your practice.